to uh, do pulpit supply here for uh, Quaker Hill. Terry and I have often said that if it didn't take 55 minutes from our house to get here, you would probably see a lot more of us. Well, I can remember in my childhood years, my mother was always adamant about making sure that her children were in church on, for Sunday school, and we had two services. We would go to Sunday school and the first service, and then we had to go and listen to the second service. She always made sure of that. And so I say bravo to all you mothers that are here making sure that your children also go to church. My dad, on the other hand, um, was a church CEO. That means he was a Christmas <laughs> and Easter, Christmas and Easter only kind of a guy. There was always uh, yard work to be done and there were repairs to do around the house that always took time on a Sunday morning. So I say to all the guys in church this morning, um, as uh, if I steal a line from Leroy Jethro Gibbs of NCIS series, on, te on television, men, it's time for us to gear up. In other words, we have to take the responsibility of being the leaders of our families that we need to, need to be. Well, I can remember singing in the choir when I was in high school and uh, being part of uh, a very active youth group in that church. And um, I can remember that was way back in the 1960s. I won't tell you how old I am now, but uh, I was, well, I will. I'm 76 now. and. Um, I will tell you a little something somewhere along the line about being this age and how happy I am to be here. But for now, um, when I was back there in the 60s singing in the choir and always going to the uh, church services, um, unfortunately, I don't think I always paid attention to what was being said in the sermon. I looked forward to the time that the choir would be up doing their things. And I can remember someone told me, uh, one of the other uh, people in the youth group came up to me one time and said, there has to be more than this in Christian Christianity. Hmm. That seems, it, it dawned on me then, and it still dawns on me now. In our Christian walk, there is always going to be room for more. In other words, no matter where you are, the Lord can always lead you forward a little bit more, that you can do something more, that you can help somebody more. There's always something, just there's room for a little more. Well, sometimes when you're reading the Bible, a word just kind of jumps out at you. And for me, a short time ago, the word therefore kind of caused me to have a knee-jerk reaction. Uh, so let's look at the word 
therefore, today. First, I thought this should be relatively simple to use the word therefore. So I took out my Strong's, we have all these Bibles upstairs, I don't know how many we have listed, King James, NIV, all kinds of Bibles. Um, but one of the things that, that Terry has always made sure that we have is the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. Now this is a book, and it tells every word that you want to look up in the Bible where it is. So I said, I'm going to do something on the word therefore. This should be relatively uh, easy. So I looked it up, and guess what? I immediately became exhausted. Therefore, is listed over 1,240 times in the Bible. I thought, well, this isn't going to be so easy then. <laughs> so, Isaiah, we read this morning, Isaiah 51.11 says, Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion. And everlasting joy shall be it upon their head. They shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. Well, so many times throughout the Old Testament, God provided protection for the Israelites in times of many adversities that they often uh, ran into, he helped them to keep on keeping on. Uh, then comes the verse I chose from the New Testament, 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if any man in Christ be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. We hear testimony after testimony in our church uh, circles of um, how coming to the Lord has dramatically changed our lives and the way that we used to be and the way that we are now. So let's, we need to look at what the word actually means. What does therefore actually mean? And why it's so important? In its most basic sense, the word simply means for that reason. It serves as a nice transition to take us from a writer saying something and then trying to explain it, what that, trying to explain what it means, or why we should even care what it means. Hmm. But think of the word therefore as a magnifying glass, taking a bigger idea and then zooming into an, an important aspect of it. It says, We've discussed a big truth. Now here's why it matters. If therefore is our signal that something important is being clarified, clar clarified we should immediately stop and ask ourselves, do I know what is being clarified? Oftentimes, we don't. Here's some more popular verses that begin with therefore. Matthew 7, 12 says, In everything, therefore, treat people the same way you want them to treat you. For this is the law and the prophets. 
In Romans 12, 1, it says, Therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And how about Colossians 3, 5? It says, Therefore, consider the members of your earthly body as dead to immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which amounts to idolatry. Well, there are a lot of things that we can see in our lives. Um, on their own, these verses give principles. Be kind to others. Treat your bodies well. Don't be immoral. However, they're all there because something that was said previously is now important. It's not just a command to be kind, but instead, Christ is saying, because of me, treat people how you want to be treated. Likewise, your desire to respect your bodies and pursue holiness needs to begin with whatever important thing was just said by the word therefore, or alluded to by the word therefore. If there's one thing we must always remember, it's that God doesn't just care what we do, but also why we do it. Hmm, that's interesting. So, let's put it this way. Therefore, it's important to understand the motivation we should have for doing these things. So whether you encounter this word, wherever you encounter this word as you're reading, time and time again, you need to ask the most important question that you can ask of your Bible reading, and that's, what is there for? There for. So very carefully, we have to look at, when we see the word therefore, what is it therefore? What does it mean for our lives? What does it mean how we should treat others? We always say that. How can that person treat me that way? Just be careful when you say that, that you're treating everybody the way you would like to be treated. So there is always room for a lot of things. One of the things that I got mesmerized in, I used to be a, uh, uh, a track athlete in, in high school, and then I became, um, later on, many years later, I became a track coach for uh, Putnam High School at the time when we moved up here. So when the Olympics are on, I was very mesmerized by watching the Olympics uh, every night that it's on. And um, unfortunately, we have a beagle that um, likes to have a lot of attention. And um, a couple of nights ago, while we were watching the Olympics, uh, I guess he thought we weren't paying enough attention to him. So at an intermission, at an ad on the thing, we got up, Terry went out to get a little treat from the 
refrigerator for me. And she said, oh, all of a sudden I hear, oh, Bill, there's a dead animal in the living room. And I said, what? I got up and I raced out there. And here's a possum. Now, it wasn't a full-grown possum. It was only about that big. And he's laying on the floor of my living room amongst all the dog toys. Well, I guess the dog decided that he needed a better toy, so he brought this possum in. So I went over and I looked at it, and I saw this possum open one eye and kind of look around. So I reached down and poked him and he jittered a little bit. And I said, oh my God, he's just plain possum. <laughs> so I picked him up by the tail and I took him outside and I placed him in very carefully down my front steps on the lawn and I called Terry and I went back in the house. I said, Terry, you gotta come see this possum. So we went outside and opened the door and the possum was gone. He had been playing possum and he ran away and he did better. Well, my dog said, well, you think that's good. The next night we're watching the Olympics and in bounds my beagle. And he had just been sprayed by a skunk. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I didn't see much of the Olympics that night either. <laughs> we had to break out. If you have a dog or anything, you have any odors in your house, you can go to Walmart and, uh, uh, and you can get a product called Poof, P-O-O-F and you spray it on whatever smells and the spray goes away. And it really works, even on a skunk. So, those are just some of the things that we see in our lives and things that happen that give us direction sometimes and we have to ask, what's it there for? Therefore. What's it there for? Think about that when you read your Bible the next time. Do a study on the word therefore. There's only 1,240 scriptures that you'll have to read. Of course, that's in the, uh, that's in the new King, I mean in the regular King James. The new King James, the NIV, they changed some of the word therefore to two or three words that really mean therefore. Do a study sometime on the word therefore. Amen and amen. Our closing song? Thank you. <laughs>